Yo, what is up guys? Welcome to the video. I hope your guys day is going great and today we have another crazy video. Dallas, Dallas Fuel, man. They cannot stay out of the limelight no matter what. They're not even playing today in the playoffs. They have a break coming up. Just stay out of the limelight. What happened last night was crazy. AKM went on his Discord and he basically flamed Rascal. We thought yesterday that Kai Kai threw him under the bus. Well, last night, AKM pulled out the freaking bulldozer and flattened Rascal. It's crazy. I'm going to cover every inch of that. Then lastly in this video, I am going to cover the games for today. My predictions for the playoffs. We have the Philadelphia Fusion taking on London Spitfire. And then the winner of that will go up against the New York Excelsior in the finals. So if you guys are new here, be sure to drop a subscription on this channel. I upload Overwatch League content every single day. You'll never miss out on the latest updates. And tonight, guys, at 8 p.m. Eastern or after the Overwatch League ends, I will be doing my first official Overwatch League podcast. Now, this isn't just my podcast. It is our podcast. You guys are allowed to come on, talk to me, ask me any questions, argue, debate, bring up any topic you want. I am aiming to have at least 40 to 50 guests on. We'll do two people every five to 10 minutes. And the only way to get on, guys, you have to be in the Discord. So join the Discord. Link will be down below. Follow my Twitch. It's going to be freaking awesome, guys. Now, let's go ahead and hop into this video. All right, let's dive deep into this Dallas Fuel and AKM situation. On his fan discord yesterday, he typed this publicly to everybody saying, I don't know why people are hating on me that much. I played one map in three matches and I still get hate. Just because I had to fill a role that I wasn't comfortable on to help the team because the guy supposed to play decided to be unprofessional and not play last minute. And he gets all the praise and stuff when he wasn't being a good teammate. I haven't played yet since we swapped tanks, but those tanks are creating so much more space than the other ones. And it's much easier to play DPS right now. It's frustrating to me when I was trying to clean someone else's mess and I get for it. Then his fans responded. They said some things back to him. Most of it was pretty encouraging. One in particular, he talked about Kai Kai in the interview and about how the Dallas Fuel management probably should have said something earlier about the Rascal in ACAM situation where he had to play Genji. ACAM responded and said this. Kai Kai basically said it in the nice way because Rascal f***ed me but he doesn't even care. Then he got even more supportive messages. Then AKM said this, now I will get hate whenever I will be played, which is totally unfair to me. Then he had even more supportive messages, said this. The thing is, people think I'm shitty at everything but Soldier. I personally think I'm equal or better at everything he plays, but Genji and off meta heroes like Mei, Sombra. I couldn't show anything because we had tanks that didn't know how to play their roles. Now that it's better, I didn't get to play yet. At least he had some sense to say this, because it makes more sense for him to play because we need Genji, and I know that, but I don't know why I get hate when I'm not even playing. Makes no sense. It's just that it makes me look bad as a player, and I lose all value I had. He was asked if he will get more chances to prove himself. He said, yeah, I will, but no matter what I do, I'll get hated because everyone loves Rascal so much. Even if I had to carry and play extremely well, I'll be told to stay on the bench. Okay, so this is definitely a ton to take in from AKM here. And he genuinely really seems upset with the situation he's been put in, which there are some really valid reasons for him to be upset for. But coming out and doing this in public, AKM, AKM, haven't you learned from your reckless teammates? Dallas Fuel Management, where are you? Why on earth is this player going out and saying these types of things in the public? Oh man, I'm about to go off guys. I'm about to go off. This stuff really frustrates me. By now you guys probably know this. It's just so ridiculous that time after time we go through the same cycles with the Dallas Fuel. They never improve on these situations. Whatever. I'm going to go off boys. Here we go. Let's do it. And do you guys want to know what led up to this? The interview with Kai Kai that we talked about yesterday where Kai Kai threw Rascal under the bus because Kai Kai did it. Oh, AKM thinks, oh, okay, I can go do it too. Hey, hey, guys, Rascal screwed me over. Screw that guy. I know you guys all love him, but screw him. Ha, 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 my team. Like, what the hell is going on, guys? Why is this happening? Where are these players' parents? Like, seriously. I seriously wonder who is running Dallas Fuel right now? Who is in charge of making sure these players aren't doing these types of things? Oh, I know. Maybe the coaching staff and management. Let's start with them. Kai Kai led by example, and ACAM followed suit. Maybe some of you guys yesterday who were disagreeing on my video and thinking I was going too hard on Kai Kai, now you probably understand why. Because this is exactly it. 
It's absolutely beyond ridiculous. No matter how shitty a teammate was, no matter how crappy or whatever he did to you, you cannot go out in public and criticize him and throw them under the bus. It's an absolute no-no. This is only going to create more rifts in between them. And at this point, now it seems like AKM and Rascal are not going to be able to coexist on a team. AKM is clearly extremely jealous, extremely upset. Sure, maybe some of it is warranted. I said that at the beginning of the video. He is allowed to feel this way, but he is not allowed to go out in public and say this type of stuff. But because of this horrible environment that has been created by the Dallas Fuel management, he feels it is okay to go out and say things like this out of spite, out of greed. Because why not? Everybody else on the team has had their moment. Effects gone out, he's broken down, leaked a whole bunch of stuff about the team. XQC, he went and leaked stuff on stream, got banned multiple times. Taimu's always on his Twitter crying, making up excuses, as well as everybody else on the team. And then yesterday was Kai Kai's turn, it's all right, let's throw Rascal under the bus. Let's try to save face with the community. Hey guys, it wasn't my reason to put in AKM on Genji. Don't blame me, go blame Rascal. So AKM is like, yeah, go blame Rascal. F that guy, it's not my fault. I'm just as good as him. I'm better than him. I get all the hate. Wow. Listen, I, it sucks that you're getting hate, Acam. I'm sorry, man. Ignore it, dude. Ignore it. I was the worst tracer in Overwatch Contender Season 1. I got flamed. There was the number one Reddit thread about how I was the worst tracer on the planet. People told me to kill myself. I ruined my team. I'm a loser. This, that. I don't give a f I didn't say one thing to the public, I never came out and cried, I waited until the entire situation blew over, the team was dead, everyone was in the Overwatch League, I made a statement, I never threw anybody under the bus, even though I could've, I maybe even should've, who knows, I don't really care though, I really don't. I moved on, I cleaned up my image, I created a YouTube channel, I started producing content, and I moved forward. And I'm not trying to brag whatsoever guys, I'm just saying, it's facts. I was one of the most hated players ever in the entire community, and at every single corner, I was flamed, harassed, and all that. But I handled it the smart way. You don't say anything, you buckle down, and you get your crap together. Because the second you start blaming, going off in the public, saying stuff, it just gets worse and worse. Imagine, guys, I was the worst tracer in contenders, and I came out and I said stuff, started blaming my teammates. I would have never have been able to made it to the position I am in now. You have to be smart about these things. And the Dallas Fuel up until this point have been so stupid. And it is completely their management's fault. And it 100% starts with the management. They're supposed to be the people on top, the smart, professional ones who teach these players how to do things like this. Sure, it's a little bit of the players' faults too. They should be smart as well. AKM personally should be smart enough to know this is not okay. Especially after some of the things his team has done and received criticism for. And then to say things like, I am better than him on every single hero besides Mei, Sombra, Genji, and off meta hero. Like, dude, like, why are you comparing your dick sizes? Like, to be fair, Acam, you are good at soldier. Other than that, you have proved in nothing else over the past year. Maybe you can flex onto the fair and do well on that. But Rascal has shown that he can play at the highest levels on almost every single DPS hero. And I think now at this point, he has proved that his soldier is even on the same level as yours. So please just cut the crap. So as I mentioned earlier, now we're in a situation where AKM and Rascal probably won't be able to coexist in a team anymore. One of them's going to end up going. Like, doesn't he know coming out and publicly saying this is only going to create a rift inside of the team? Like, I just can't comprehend what exactly he is thinking he will benefit from doing this. Unless it's like he's trying to get kicked or traded from the team. Which, I mean, maybe that, you know, maybe that's true. I don't know. He doesn't benefit anything from this. So, ACAM, in my opinion, really screwed up here. Big time. This isn't a good look for him at all. Future teams and teammates are going to look at him and be like, oh man, if I ever, you know, get on his bad side, is he going to publicly expose me and say stuff about me? It's just not a good look for him. And I feel bad for him because just, it comes back to Kai Kai. Man, if Kai Kai wouldn't have said what he did in that interview, Akem more than likely would not have said this on his Discord. He only said it because he felt he was allowed to because Kai Kai did. Oh, Jesus, man. It is, guys, it is such a mess. This Dallas Fuel organization needs to be completely wiped and revamped, starting with the coach Kai Kai. All of a the sudden, there's this new trend going on. Oh, don't hate Kai Kai. It's not his fault. He, it's out of his control. Dude. 
It is so not out of his control. He is the head coach of this team. He is responsible for these players, their actions, how they perform, and everything else. As well as that, so is the management. And maybe some of you are sitting here watching like, oh, well, it's okay. The team's performing well. They did good last week, right? Sure, they had a good week. They got two maps off New York Excelsior. They got one map off London Spitfire. Congratulations. Overall, it means nothing. Unless they start winning consistently for multiple weeks or an entire stage, they're not going to earn anybody's respect. And to be fair, the chances that they will keep performing at a high level are pretty slim. Because from what we've seen from them, every time they do good, it goes straight downhill, especially after some drama happens like this. As well as that from any other Western team in the league, as soon as they look good for one to two weeks, they're right back to being extremely inconsistent and losing to other teams. I really, really don't care about how well they performed last week because it goes out the window when this type of stuff happens. There's extreme inner turmoil. It seems like AKM literally hates Rascal. Not only that, he is also jealous of him. And also, let me touch on Rascal here real quick before some of you guys go down in the comments and are like, oh, you're just nut hugging Rascal because you love Koreans or whatever. Hell no, I'm not defending him, dude. So here, let me go ahead and talk about Rascal real quick then. Yes, he was unprofessional. What he did should not have happened. If you are set to play, you need to show up and play. There's no, oh, well, you know, I don't want to play. We're not doing that well lately. I don't think it's going to be good for me or for the team. You coach, just, you know, play AKM on, on Genji. He'll do fine. No, that is bullshit. I'm not defending him at all. Him doing that is extremely bad, but then Kai Kai and AKM going out and exposing it and creating this inner drama is way worse and extremely unhealthy for the team, which is the main reason I'm focusing on AKM, Kai Kai, and the management in this video. But Rascal is completely in the wrong as well. If I were the head coach of a team and my player came up to me last minute and was like, oh, we're not doing good, I'm not playing. I'd be like, boy, Get your ass in there or you're going to be benched for a month straight. I don't care how good you are. We've been practicing with you. Our best chance to win is with you. Not with some guy who's never played Genji. Are you delusional, buddy? Get in there now. Whatever things you got going on in your mind and you don't like about the team, you need to get over them. And I'm more than happy to help you get over them. Let's go ahead and talk about it tonight. Sit down. Spend an hour or two together. Tell me everything you got. But you have to understand, we need you to play. If you don't play, it's going to come back. It's going to bite us in the ass. And not only that, we just have our best chance with you. You're a great player. You can work through the adversity. I believe in you. The team believes in you. Now get out there and sh** some kids. You don't see in the NFL a quarterback saying, oh, yeah, no, I don't want to play, coach. You know, we're not practicing to go well this week. Hey, just put in the second string. Hell no, dude. You do that, you lose your job. Absolutely, you lose your job. And I... I, what are we 12 minutes in guys? I'm as you can tell I am extremely frustrated It is getting to a point where it is it's not okay These guys pay too much money for this team these players are being paid too much these owners coaches They're all being paid way too much They need to be way more professional or they need to find people that can be professional the environment that has been created is completely toxic and I'm done here, guys. I, I, I think I've said everything I wanted to say. Let me know what you guys think down below if you agree or disagree with me. Now, let's move on to the last part of this video, which will probably be much shorter. I'm going to talk about the games today, my predictions. We got the London Spitfire going up against the Philadelphia Fusion in the first round of the playoffs. And, I mean, I think you guys know I'm going to say London Spitfire are going to win this. Either 3-1 or 4-0. London Spitfire, time after time, when the pressure is on and they need to win, they win. Simply put, the entire roster shows up from Prophet, Birdring, Gesture, Who Y'all, Fury, Nuss, Bedos, and Hogapen, all of them, they show up when needed. The only guy on the team that I wouldn't trust on the field when it matters is Who Reg, and he's not going to get any playtime, so I think they're in a great position to take this. Sure, the Philadelphia Fusion, they've had a great run this stage. They've really only lost to the top three Korean teams, but they've also had some really close games with the other Western teams, and they've shown that they are pretty inconsistent. Carpe is very good, EQO is very good, and the versatility overall on the roster is insane. These guys could throw the London Spitfire off a little bit by running different types of comps and strategies, depending on what roster they run. But at the end of the day, I think in game, the London Spitfire are too smart, too adaptable, and they will overcome the Philadelphia Fusion. Moving them on to the finals against the New York Excelsior. Now, this is the great debate I often come across. Who is better, New York or London? I always say London. My main reason why? Well, they come up clutch when it matters. They defeated the New York Excelsior the last two times they played. One of the matches was very telling. It was a reverse sweep. Mentally, it seemed like the New York Excelsior broke down and London Spitfire picked them apart late in that series. 
The second series was much different. It wasn't a reverse sweep. It was back and forth the entire time. New York Excelsior, obviously, they did not have Arc. They had Mano in on the Lucio. He played fine. Obviously, it's not going to be as good as Arc, and they lost. Sure, this was a big reason why they might have lost, but at the end of the day, they still lost. And we can't use hypotheticals and say, oh, if they had Arc, though, they would have won because they didn't have Arc and they still lost. London Spitfire beat them. And just overall, when you watch the London Spitfire play a match that they want to win, they play insane. Sure, they lose games here and there to Los Angeles Gladiators, the Boston Uprising, Houston Outlaws. It really does happen, and that's because they show up to different teams at different levels. When they go up against the Houston Outlaws or Boston Uprising, to be fair, they aren't looking at it like, oh, we got to win this. We need to play at our best. Let's try. Like, we need to kill these guys. But when they go up against New York Excelsior, their blood boils. The pressure kicks in, and Profit, Bird Ring, Gesture, they start playing at levels we have not seen before. And we're going to exactly see that tonight. Sure, it's going to be a close one. New York Excelsior is probably going to get two maps. But at the end of the day, my faith, my trust is in the London Spitfire squad. And now I know a lot of you guys are thinking, well, you know, New York Excelsior is damn good. They have SBB, the best tracer in the league, which he might be. He could be better than Profit. It's really based on a person's opinion. They're both so damn good. And the great thing about it is one of them will play better than the other tonight. And whoever does will be labeled as the best tracer in the league. As for Libero, the guy, he's an animal. He's been playing so well in that projectile role this stage. Really showing players up like Fleta, who we thought was one of the best players in the entire world. Now Libero looks to be stronger than him. Then let's talk about that support line. Jonak, Ark, who I won't even argue. I think they're the best support duo in the entire league. But will it be enough to carry them? Are they going to be able to shut down Bird Ring and Profit and Gesture when they're diving in on them? I don't think so. Regardless, guys, it's going to be a great battle. I cannot wait. My pick is the London Spitfire. At the end of the day, though, all I want to see is amazing Overwatch. If London loses, I won't be upset. I'm not going to shed a tear. If it's a 4-0, I might shed a tear because that sounds pretty boring. But regardless, if it's a 3-2, I'm going to celebrate, boys, because I love the Overwatch League. I love competition, and let's get it going, guys. Thank you for watching my video. If you haven't subscribed already, please consider doing so. I upload content like this every single day. As well as that, guys, come watch the podcast. Come talk on the podcast. It's going to be awesome. Follow the Twitch for the notification. Join the Discord if you want to get on it. And I love you all. Peace.